Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and I never said I was the best mother in the world. Give me a little credit, will you? <laughs> credit for being someone who tried to love you the only way she knew how. Joining me is my podcasting <laughs> sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. You're driving me crazy. I'm going to go eat with Montana now. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that line so well, but I do. I love Whoopi in this movie. Whoopi is hilarious in this movie. She is so funny. We are dorking out about 1991's Soap Dish, which many, many people have been asking us to talk about. And I actually can't list you all because there were quite a few of you. Uh it is streaming right now on Amazon Prime, so if you're already paying for Amazon Prime, you could just watch it, like, for free, quote-unquote. It is directed by Michael Hoffman, who also did One Fine Day, which we also did a podcast on. And yes. it stars Sally Field, Kevin Klein, Robert Downey Jr., Kathy Moriarty, Whoopi Goldberg, Elizabeth Shue, this is a really good cast, Terry Hatcher, Gary Marshall, and national treasure, Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher. It's, it's a murderer's row. It of really great is. Great comedians. It really is. It's this movie's pretty tight. Did you see it in the movie theater? I don't think I did. I don't have a memory of that. I have more of a memory of watching it on TV because it was on TV all. It's one of those movies. It was on TV all the time. Yeah. Because there's like no nudity and no cursing barely. Right. It's it's yeah. kind of a perfect like. We were talking about this before we started recording. It is like a perfect Saturday, Sunday morning. It's on USA movie. Mm -hmm. Like it is. It played at my movie theater. So I, I've seen parts. I saw the whole thing, but then I saw parts of it a lot, <laughs> especially, mm -hmm. the, especially the end where they're all like dancing over the credits because you're, you're constantly cleaning the theater during the credits and you get used to those songs and those scenes, but <clears throat> excuse me sorry did you watch any soap operas back in the day oh i was a young and the restless person mm. guiding light and young and the restless when my in the summers especially because my grandmother would stay with us and she was the cbs person that and she'd have her little salem cigarettes yes and and watch her shows okay i love it i love it so much that you said she was a CBS person because when oh, you yeah. said when you said Young and the Restless and Guiding Light, I was like, "Oh, you're a CBS person." See, we were we were an ABC family. That's me the rest of the time. Yeah. So I was Young and the I'm sorry General Hospital the school year round, mm -hmm. and then when Grandma came to visit, eventually I got so attached to ABC that I would go to a friend's house yeah. and watch General Hospital. Yeah. So yes, I, I know soap operas. Yeah, I was a, I was all of them. My mom watched all of them, like from, I think it was like All My Children, One Life to Live, General Hospital. And then there used to be one called The Edge of Night. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there was also Lori, one called- Lori Loughlin was in that yeah, one, right? There also was one called Ryan's Hope. Yep. ABC. Um, that I think Meg Ryan was on back in the day. A lot of great actors. Uh, Robin Wright was yeah. in- uh, the, Santa Barbara. The Santa Barbara. You're right. Um uh, a lot of great people started in soap operas. Yeah, I also, so I was an ABC girl, and you guys, I can't stress enough, like, how insanely popular soap operas were in, like, the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Insanely popular, especially, like, General Hospital. There was this couple, Luke and Laura, you probably are like, I know of that. Like, it was bananas how insanely popular it was. And they got married and that shit was like a national holiday. Like people like called in sick to work to stay home and watch Do you it. remember watching that wedding? Yes. We and watched then Roger it like caught the bouquet. It was like we it was like when Princess Diana and Prince Charles got married. It was like a big deal. No, no, was it Scotty caught the bouquet? Who caught the bouquet? I don't remember. Yeah, he was the person that was Luke's um adversary. Yeah. And he dated Laura before uh, this is before this is after luke raped laura but before they started yeah. dating what the she was with scotty scotty what? baldwin yeah what the fuck by the way yeah luke <laughs> people forget that part about luke and laura it started with an attempted date rape basically <laughs> i'm like what that, and by the way that happened all the time in these shows yes women yes. were women were always falling in love with their rapists i don't that is not a thing 
Well, they, they, they try to make it look like they're swooning. So it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. That kind of thing. Oh, oh God. I loved soaps. I totally oh, but they look great. I used to take my lunch break in college and go sit in this like TV lounge area and watch all my children with like 20 other women that all yep. were also like just we were all eating our salads basically watching <laughs> all my children and I don't even remember these women's names but we all were there like every day watching this and like just oh no no he didn't oh fuck that guy Blah. like just <laughs> super into it and then just like when it was over just went our separate ways <laughs> so it's kind of amazing actually so the reason we're talking about soap operas is because if you haven't seen Soap Dish, it's a it's about a soap opera. It's kind of a soap opera in a soap opera. And the soap opera is called The Sun Also Sets. Such a soap, <laughs> such a soap opera name. And Sally Field is like kind of the Susan Lucci of the show. Um or maybe that's too inside baseball to say that. But Susan Lucci was on All My Children, and she was, like, the biggest star of daytime. Erica Kane. Yeah, she was Erica Kane. And if you said her, like, married names, it would go on for, like, ten minutes. It was, like, Erica Kane, Chandler, Smith, Jones, Chandler again, Jackson. Like, it was ridiculous. Anyway, she's been my, married, like, 12 times. My friend Cherie. I worked at Modern Bride Magazine, and she was with Brides Magazine. And she actually got her editor in chief, Millie, to be on All My Children oh my to interview Erica Kane for her like 12th or 13th marriage. <laughs> and it was a big deal. Like the whole company watched it and stuff like that. But that's that's how big she was. Yeah. So oh my God. I, I kind of miss soap operas right now. I know, I know. There's all kinds of like evil twins. <laughs> People... The evil twin is greater. Somebody who's not dead. Yeah, somebody who's dead and then they're not dead. Um, a lot of secret children, which we're going to get into here. It's just amazing. I mean, I guess nighttime soaps are still kind of a thing. I mean, that's yeah, what Grey's Anatomy reality, is, right? It, that's what Grey's Anatomy, yeah, totally. And also I would say like a lot of reality TV kind of fits that, scratches that itch. Yeah. That makes sense to me. So... Uh, Sally Field is like the biggest daytime star. She's insanely popular, but there's some people that she works with that they want her off the show. They're ready for their time to shine. And that's like Kathy Moriarty plays Nurse Nan <laughs> on The Sun Also Sets. And she really wants to be the big star. So she's kind of trying, she's trying to seduce the producer of the show. And that's Robert Downey Jr., and she's trying to get him to write Sally Field off the show so that she can shine. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg plays the head writer. She's really, really funny in this movie. And Rose Schwartz. Rose Schwartz. Of course that's her name. <laughs> and De uh, Kathy Moriarty's character, Nurse Nan, her big plan is she brings back Kevin Klein, one of Sally Field's Sally Field's old love interests on the show who's been decapitated on the show <laughs> <laughs> to bring him back to like upset her and kind of put the wheels in motion for her to leave the show and then we find Kevin Klein working at the dinner theater in Florida <laughs> is Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman <laughs> in, the, in the scene made me laugh so hard is him like trying to do justice to Willie Loman and all these old people are like, I spilled my soup. And like, <laughs> he just goes, Providence <laughs> in Rhode Island. Why is he yelling? <laughs> it's so humiliating. I could just imagine. It's it is. And there's I there's also like a scene at the beginning where Sally Field's character wins the daytime Emmy. And she's up there and she's like, I want to thank my supporting cast. And then they cut to like everyone at her table and they're like smiling and clapping. And they're like, I hate her so much. She's a hag, <laughs> bitch. Like, just, and I'm like, it's probably real. <laughs> I'm like, that's actual footage at award shows. <laughs> uh, also, I wanted to mention Celeste is newly single because her, her, boyfriend left her her 
her man left her to go back to his family, to back to Pittsburgh. And I love this scene, too. She's like, that's how awful I am. He went back <laughs> to his family at Pittsburgh. Do you know who that was, the voice? Yes. <laughs> Kevin Spacey. It's Kevin Spacey. She's better off without him. He was a creep. Yeah. <laughs> and I love on his voicemail. He's like, please take care of the plants. And then, like, they cut to her, like, pouring bleach all over the plants. And she's, like, smoking and drinking vodka. Like, Sally Field is, like, at an 11, this whole movie. She's so funny. And you forget how funny she is. She's great at comedy. She is. You know, she, we, were, we talked about when we talked about Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah. She's great. She's And she's, like, 45, and she looks amazing. Yes. And, and, and she, I just beautiful. love, like, she is constantly, like, yelling and crying and storming around like super drama queen which is what you need for this yeah. part it's so funny to me i was like when is she not yelling <laughs> the only time she's not yelling is when kevin klein is kissing her and like she's just like she'll just like swoon she'll just collapse like while he kisses her because she's like so into him it's uh and kevin klein is Oh, he's so great. I fucking love Kevin Klein so much. <laughs> I love his he's little He's always mustache. believable. I love his little mustache. Yeah. He looks so handsome in it. And he's just, every line he delivers makes me, like, it just makes me laugh so hard. He's so funny. I just, I really liked watching this. And then, so also... <laughs> I'm I'm jumping all over the place, you guys. I'm That's sorry. Fine. I'm super caffeinated. Um, Elizabeth Shue shows up. Um, we don't know who she is for a while. She's just someone who really wants to act. And she gets a scene in the soap opera. It turns out she is Celeste's niece, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, she's hired to be a homeless person. Yeah. Because they already had some, and then Robert Tyler goes, these guys are really disgusting. We need some good-looking homeless people. Yeah, did you really hire these homeless people <laughs> off the street? We need some better-looking homeless people. So they hire Elizabeth Shue to come in. And because she's adorable. She is. I was just going to ask, how adorable is Elizabeth Shue? Everybody drink. Everybody drink. She's 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 adorable. She's beautiful. I love Elizabeth mm -hmm. Shue. I'm so happy oh, to too. see her. I'm like, where is she? Where's Elizabeth Shue? Can we get more of that? More, more Elizabeth please. Shue. More Elizabeth Shue, please. And also, how cute is Robert Downey Jr.? He, and he's so funny in this movie. Yeah. He's so quirky, like it was so much energy. I love it when he's storming down the hallways and he stops and snaps his fingers and then goes <laughs> back. He's just, he's such a goofball. And he has the hots for Montana. Mm -hmm. That's the Kathy Moriarty character, Montana Morehead. That's her real, that's her actress name, or the actor's name. And so she's, they're flirting with each other, and she's the one who's trying to devise a plan to get make uh, Sally Field go crazy. And so she's the one that says, oh, have her kill the homeless person. Have her kill the homeless girl. <laughs> and she's a mute because they don't know if she can act or not, so they just made her a mute. And then she <laughs> almost stabs her, and then she goes, oh, my God, this is my niece. Then what happens is, of course, Kevin Klein's character, uh, what's his name, David? J no. Uh, Jeffrey Anderson. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Anderson. So Kevin Klein like then starts taking Elizabeth Shue out to dinner. Yeah, he's a little old for her, but yeah. he and then they have a flirtation and that's when Sally Field does the thing where she goes up the pipe by the side of the building. Right. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little ridiculous, yeah. but it's supposed to be. I've got America's sweetheart climbing up my drain pipe. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go back a little bit. What about when she's having a meltdown and then Whoopi Goldberg says, you know what? You know what we need to do? We got to go yeah. back. We got to go back. I used to work at that mall, <gasps> Paramus Park. Where? What store did oh, you yeah. work in? It was this. It was a newsstand, so it was like out in the food court area. Mm -hmm. And so I sold cigarettes and gum in magazines. Was it on a tray? Were you like that gum cigarettes? No, gum. no, no. It was no. a stand. It was like no, a newsstand. I'm just teasing. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> but you could see everything from there. Like all this, all this shit happened. But I, that's a huge mall, and it's very, very popular. And it makes total sense. Her character, like a soap opera actor, would would be re recognized there. Absolutely. And I love that. I love it. And it was like, I hope it goes, oh, my God, it's her. It's her. Oh, my God. And she gets the crowd around her, and that gives her, her, that gives her a boost to her ego. Mm -hmm. And so everybody thinks she's just insecure about that. But then what it turns out, and it's great because they do this on camera, is that she says, no, no, no. 
Elizabeth Shue, she's my, Lori's my daughter and you're her daddy and we had a fling and it was Shakespeare in the Park and then you left and then, you know, and so they start to rebuild their relationship from there. But, yes. but Montana is trying to use all this against her. Yeah, I, I also, I love the relationship between Kevin Klein and Elizabeth Shue because it does start off as romantic mm -hmm. and it's creepy because if you've seen the movie, you know where this is headed and you're like, ooh, this is ugly. And But they address it, right? So Kevin Klein actually says, yeah. one more date and we would have had a Greek tragedy on our hands. <laughs> and I think that's like such a great line. Well, you know what? That's what would happen on a soap opera. It totally would. Absolutely. And there's... um. There's a lot of different things going on on this show. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I understand the timeline of when everything's happening because Lori becomes instantly like a huge soap star. Yes. I feel like within days, she's yes. a massive star and she's getting very diva. Like, it's yes. them or me, like all this stuff, you know. I, so I don't understand the timeline of how long all of this is going on but it all of course is going to come to a climax in a live show because of course it is you know, right just, like, just to like tootsie just like tootsie exactly yep. and you know and they don't know who's going to stay and who's going to go and all this stuff it's it's so soap opera i do want to talk about jeffrey and celeste i think kevin klein and sally field have really great chemistry and i think they're super funny together I totally agree. I think they're so funny together and they, they, they're great actors and they just treat the material like it's real. Yeah. And, and they're both over the top actors and I love it with like, like Robert Harris is pitching him the idea, like your character, he's been to you because oh, European colonial, like he's already building the characters. <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's just so silly, but it's like exactly like how like a, a soap opera actor would behave. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just awesome. I love that Jeffrey, that's the Kevin Klein character has framed photos of himself all around his apartment and then later we cut to celeste's apartment and she also has framed photos of herself all around her apartment and i'm like so actor like, you know what that's so funny i was reading um tatum o'neill's book mm -hmm. and when her dad was dating farrah fawcett that was the first thing she noticed whenever they went to farrah fawcett's house just like every room was a shrine to farrah fawcett oh god that's so weird isn't that weird? I mean, but then I'm like, do I have too many pictures of me in my apartment? It's just, <laughs> I, there's like, a, you know, you've been here. My, yeah. I'm not too egocentric. No. Right? It's not too. You know what it is? It's different when, if it's a framed photo of you, like with someone else or you doing mm -hmm. something, what they have in their apartments are like framed headshots. Yes. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Different. Yes. I'm like, there's pictures around my house of me with like Calvin and my husband doing things or whatever. That's not the same. But if I had like taken publicity stills and I framed them, that would be a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is my shrine to myself. <laughs> Maybe I should do that. I'm going to do it. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Uh, yeah. So there's a big scene where... Uh, Kevin Klein's character is supposed to kiss Elizabeth Shue, and that's when Celeste like freaks out in the like <laughs> most hilarious, like runs over. She still has like clips and curlers in her hair, and <laughs> and she just jumps. Like I love that she doesn't just run over there and like interrupt it. She jumps on him like a mad woman and like <laughs> knocks him to the ground, and they have to like physically remove her. And how they remove her, she's still like in this crazy position while they like lift her out and you know sally feels super little right so it's yeah. like so easy for them to like take her off of him and you know she's you know she's your daughter <laughs> like, it's like so soap opera how much do you love gary marshall as the head oh of gosh. daytime Pro he's such a great actor he's always funny in what he's doing and i, I just like it was expensive and depressing you know what i like I like the words cheap, and I like the words peppy. That's what I want. He's so good at that part. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and he would go on to make a lot of movies that I don't ever want to see. <laughs> like, he did He did all those, like, holiday-type movies, right? So it was, like, New Year's Eve, yeah, Valentine's no, he made, Day. He also, he did Overboard. He did, yeah. um... He did good but ones, yeah, there's too. But, yeah, there's a few stinkers, though, yeah, for sure, especially towards the end. Yeah, Overboard, I think, is on our list. 
Yeah. And of course he did Pretty Woman. Yeah, there you go. Which a lot of people super love. So there you go. I might love it. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a long time. Anyway, it all comes to head in the live show where none of them know which one is going to get to stay on the show. And in typical soap opera fashion, it turns into this like, Lori has brain fever. It's like, it's like not a thing. <laughs> and, and he can't read the cue cards yeah. because he forgot his contacts. He, and then... Yeah, he, he, and he won't wear his glasses because he's too vain. <laughs> <laughs> so this, they decide like they're going to get rid of Lori. She has brain fever, quote unquote. And then that's when Sally Field is like, wants to defend Lori, wants her to stay on the show and she's going to give it up. So there's going to be a brain transplant because of <laughs> course there is <laughs> with emergency surgery right there at a restaurant. It's just so ridiculous. And while all this is going on, also nurse Nan, uh, Montana Moorhead is also <laughs> leaking stories to the press saying that she is pregnant with Kevin Klein's baby. That is also something that is happening. Because it's a soap opera. Because it's a soap opera. And then, so there, so she brings like a hacksaw and <laughs> something else, like like a spatula or something, like a, a sieve. Yeah. And, and they're going to just do this operation at the restaurant. Yes. At the, at the, and so th she's laying on the table. Sally Field's laying on the table. And then she, she says, no, 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 it's fine. Let's do the operation. And that's when Whoopi Goldberg and Terry. Uh, Terry Hatcher. Terry Hatcher, sorry. Who's so funny in this movie? She has oh one of gosh. the best lines ever. I laugh. He says, out loud. "Oh, you have beautiful eyes." Because oh, thanks. That's nothing compared to my tits. Yeah, you should come <laughs> up and see them sometime. <laughs> she was hot. Yeah. She was a total hot bitch. She has a great '80s '90s hair. Yeah, just gigantic, super gigantic. And I'm like, was this like Terry Hatcher's career early back in the day? I feel like yeah. everything was about her tits because this that was on Seinfeld too. Yes. She was a beauty. She was yeah. a hot girl. Yeah. Yeah. Terry. Ha she And she was funny as shit. Yeah. She could do comedy. Mm -hmm. So they show up. Yeah. With the, uh, with the uh, yearbook. Yes. Um, this is where the movie starts to get problematic. And they reveal that Montana cannot be pregnant because she was a man. She used to be Milton Moorhead. And they like open this yearbook. And I will say the the reveal of it is kind of funny in how Whoopi Goldberg opens it. Yes. And then she's like, hello. Like the way <laughs> she says it is actually really funny. And they out her like on national TV and she's like, no. And she like runs off and um, Robert Downey Jr. is. Yes. Like actually in this reaction is kind of funny too, where he's like, oh, like you know kind of like maybe he's gonna puke or whatever and he's like oh excuse me i'm gonna go down and uh, congratulate the cast or whatever and, you know and like walks off but that scene is really weird it's weird and we have to say it was 30 years ago yeah so there's a there, i mean there were movies that handled that subject way worse you know for sure like ace, like ace ventura and, and stuff they had yeah. they, they had the same thing and they handled it really badly but it is it is played for laughs, and then Gary Marshall does say, "Oh, she's a boy, she's a boy," and it's like clearly she's not, right? But if it, it's like that's putting a modern sensibility. So we do. I mean, if if that's upsetting to yeah. you, maybe we just want to warn you ahead of time. Yeah, you know, it's it's just it was a different time. Yeah, but but also I think the part where I was like, ah, yeah, him saying like she's a boy is supposed to be a laugh line, but for me, I was like, eh, mm. right. But then. As the movie, and then that's kind of the end of the movie, and then it progresses to like its happy ending. And the joke is now is that Montana Moorhead is now doing the dinner theater in Florida, and, right? As Willie Lowe. <laughs> but now she's back to being Milton Moorhead. But didn't she have a sex change? Yeah, somewhere? and I was like, uh, that's not really how that works. But maybe right. I'm applying a logic to soap dish that it doesn't need to have. <laughs> right, right. And it is a soap dish. It is like it is outlandish yeah so that that part like pulls me out of it a little bit i it's a little punching down for me at that mm -hmm. point but yes but i also understand when you say like we're applying a modern sensibility 
to this that makes sense. Yeah. But Kathy Moriarty is really, really funny in this part. Like everybody's funny. Yeah. I just everybody's I, I do, great. I do love like she is playing that part as a very like almost like an over the top drag queen with mm-hmm. like an obscene amount like an obscene amount of makeup and like the big hair they all but they all do they all do actually now that I think about it because that's how soap operas are yeah like, the one of the things the movie gets right is the clothes mm-hmm. the, tur- the tur- turban there's a thing about turbans and it's totally something they do to older actresses on soap operas for some reason they start wearing turbans I don't know why that's a thing and the amount of makeup and the clothes and the boobs and the clothes that they wear in the situations their characters are in like Sally Field's characters at a soup kitchen and she's wearing the most outlandish like gone with the wind polka dot dress <laughs> like serving soup to the homeless like soap operas are like that that's it's that's just- how they are but Terry Hatcher just walks in and she's like I'm a neurosurgeon and <laughs> and she's wearing the tiniest dress ever it's just, it's yeah, and like, just her just boobs hilarious. are out, huge hair, yep. like, oh, it's Dr. Blah, 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 whatever her name is. Like, it's so soap opera. It does, it gets so much right about soap operas in that way. The sets are very soap opera. Um, The, like, the backgrounds on those sets are super soap opera. Like, it's such a ridiculous thing. I have to say they don't use Carrie Fisher enough, though. Yeah, you've got you've got like a secret weapon there and they mm-hmm. don't use her enough and I have to wonder if Carrie Fisher did any like script doctoring here too cuz that was Because it's so funny. Yeah, cuz she she did a lot of that in the 90s. It was kind of a secret and I think it came out more after she died. Like Carrie Fisher was like a secret script doctor. She was constantly rewriting scripts for people all the time because she's funny as fuck like Carrie yes. Fisher is really really funny and I have to wonder if she slips some jokes in there because that's her thing but even her like little scene is funny like she's a casting agent and she's fucking she's gross like she's like <laughs> making this guy like take his shirt off to audition for a, wa- a role as a waiter <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and like later like we see that like as he leaves like uh, Elizabeth Shue busts in the room and she's like pulling up her panties because she totally <laughs> had sex with that guy. It's just, it's gross, but it's funny. She's funny. <laughs> I They could have used her more for sure. I think so. I love her. And, she's the best. Yeah, and it it's fun to see Whoopi Goldberg doing something funny. I think that right now Whoopi Goldberg is just the host of The View. Yeah, and it's like, oh, that's that chick who argues with Megan McCain every day, and it's like, that's not what Whoopi Goldberg does best. No, I would like to see Whoopi Goldberg go back to acting because I think she's great. And well, I think she's, she's going to be. She's funny. She's going to be in the stand. She's playing Mother Abigail. <gasps> that's good casting. Yeah, yeah. They just released the pictures for it. I don't know when that's supposed to come out. It was supposed to come out this summer, mm. but it's a story about a pandemic, and so CBS <laughs> yeah. thought, well, maybe not, not such a great time. Yeah, maybe we wait. Maybe we'll we wait. wait a few months. So she is acting, and I know she misses acting, but she's she's so funny. It's so funny to see her in, in a suit and a skirt. I know. I was thinking <laughs> I was the like, same oh thing. Because she usually wears like clothes like she looks like she's from the future. Like there's <laughs> just these long, flowy robes. It's because Whoopi Goldberg, <laughs> she is so interesting, like, her deliveries are interesting. The way she looks is interesting. Like, she does seem like she's not of this time. Mm-hmm. My husband has been rewatching Star Trek The Next Generation because, of course, he is. Of course. Everybody is, right? A lot of people are right now. It's a good comfort show. And she's in that show. I'd forgotten that she was in that show because I didn't watch it all the time. But I was like, of course she's in this show. She's like a natural fit for something like that because she's so different looking i think i think she's a trekkie too yeah i think she asked to be on the show i think they wrote the part for her and she's really good in it i just i love when Whoopi goldberg shows up in movies and she's not playing Whoopi goldberg yeah you know and 
I'm glad to hear that she's doing something else other than The View. I don't watch The View, but I think I she can't. Yeah, she's more than the person who argues with whoever the conservative person is on the panel. She could do better. Indeed. I didn't read. Did you read? You read the book, the like ladies who punch or whatever. Yes, is, yes. Does that include like the Whoopi Goldberg time on the show? Yeah. So this is what's so funny about that because. And Whoopi has kind of a reputation, like not being so great sometimes to work with. Uh, but Rosie O'Donnell said that that Terry, that Whoopi Goldberg was the meanest person to her oh, ever. Interesting. And I think Rosie's one of the meanest people <laughs> ever. So I just, that's, I can't wrap my mind around that yeah. personally. Um, I'm sure she's tough. I think, but you know, to be who she is and where she came from, yeah. what she's had to overcome, I think that's part of that. And I think also just like at this point in her life, like, Hearing the inanities of Megan McCain, yeah, I'm sure it would make anybody crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I if can't, you listen to I our "What a watch. Creep" show, yeah, listen to our "What a Creep" show because we did a show about talk shows and we had we mentioned Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, honestly, we should probably do a sequel to that one because yeah, we're getting a lot of people asking us about other talk show creeps that was not in that episode. So mm -hmm. we will we will do that. Uh, I did a little reading about, oh, actually, before I go to that, I wanted to mention, so over the credits, there's like, they, they all win awards at the end. They all, they all win awards because that's, that's their big prize. You know, Kevin Klein wins, Sally Field wins, Elizabeth Shue wins, and then Dave, like, and the show wins. So David's there, Robert Downey Jr., and I'm, I'm wondering, why is David not punished for all the shit he did, but Montana is? You know? Because, uh, you know. The woman must be punished. Yeah. Yeah. It's worse for the woman to be evil than the guy. Yeah. Yeah. That part's shitty. But then they, there's like a really fun like dance at the end. They're all like doing the cha-cha or tango or whatever. They're all dancing. And I have to say, I was really impressed with Kevin Klein and Sally Fields dancing. They were good. They're really good dance partners. Yeah. And they look like they're having so much fun. I mean, they look like they're having so much fun throughout the whole movie. Supposedly, there were a ton of reshoots with this movie. So I wonder what didn't work. Because when people say, well, there's a ton of reshoots, it means it's a bad movie. But that's not always the case. Sometimes they fix a thing. So yeah. supposedly, they did a lot of reshoots with this movie. But I thought... I thought it turned out great. It's a tight little film. It's like an hour and 30 minutes. Oh, my it God. Just, such it goes a, in and goes out. Such an easy watch. Yeah. I read that Burt Reynolds was originally offered Kevin Klein's role. And Lonnie said no. Yeah. Lonnie Anderson, his wife, she said no way. I think that's why they broke up. Probably. Um, she said that everyone would laugh at her because Burt Reynolds and Sally Field used to be together. Which is so dumb. Yeah, it's pretty dumb. Also, like, I, I think Kevin Klein is super, super funny in this movie. So I'm not like, oh, it would have been so much better with Burt Reynolds. But it would have been a different movie. Yeah, but Burt I think Reynolds, Burt Reynolds but, is very funny. Yeah, but Burt Reynolds and Sally Field also have, like, really great chemistry. And I would be curious to see what that movie would have looked like. Yeah. So I, I would have been okay with that. I also read that three of the people in the movie actually were in soap operas. So Kevin Klein was in Search for Tomorrow. Oh, my God. Which I didn't watch. No. Uh, Terry Hatcher was in one called Capital. Oh, yeah. I think that was based in D.C., right? I think so. And then yeah. I didn't watch that one. And then there's someone on one of the smaller parts named Paul Johansson. Oh, he plays Bolt. Sorry. Bolt is he plays great. Bolt. I was doing legless in the other room. Are you okay? Oh I can't believe we almost went through the whole episode and we didn't mention Bolt is Sally Field's husband. TV on husband. His TV husband. And he's ridiculously young for her. It's so amazing. And he's just like a beautiful muscle, like muscly guy who's clearly stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that they like kiss and like he's wearing like a towel <laughs> and then he takes the towel off and he's actually naked and she's like wear a swimsuit and he's like how am I supposed to act like I'm naked if I'm wearing a swimsuit <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 oh, 
but he was on Santa Barbara, which I I used to watch off and on. So I can't believe I forgot that. And then, um, the man who is presenting the awards at these shows was from Days of Our Lives, but I forget the actor's name. He was he wore an eye patch, right? Yes. I don't know in real life or just on the show, oh, but I remember but, he was an eye patch guy. Yeah. So I think on the show. For the longest time, they just called him Patch. <laughs> if I remember, yes. and I was like, "What the? <laughs> what?" And then, really? Yeah. And then I, th- but I think eventually he felt he got a know, name. Yeah. Well, like every other soap opera, right? He um he tried to rape someone, if I remember correctly, and she fell in love with him, and they became quite the love story. And I think his name was, and it turned out his name was Stephen. So it was like Stephen and Kayla. Or something like that. And he got plastic surgery so he didn't have the eye patch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love soap operas. They're that stupid. Days of Our Lives went off the fucking rails. Like Steven Nichols is his name. Oh, yes, yes. That show went off the rails. It it went beyond like um like who's the father of so-and-so's baby and like all this stuff it started doing stuff with like possessions and there was like like almost like a james bond villain named stefano who would show up and yes. like do like horrible things and like with crazy inventions but the one i i remember this is where i was like i think i'm out was they they started doing things where like people were possessed by the devil no that was stuff, what's right? her face she was possessed by the devil the blonde lady yeah it was like marlena yes but i forget the actress's name it's yeah and do you remember general hospital when they had the prince the ice princess yes and they had uh liz liz taylor was on the show and rick springfield <laughs> dr rick... noah drake i loved and they had... rick springfield oh dr noah drake i mean and rick springfield together he was but... so hot do you remember that it caused an ice storm in the middle of summer or something? <laughs> <laughs> and they had to go to an island? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then they brought in, there was like a British or like an Australian or British like yes, secret like agent. Yeah, Australian guy. Yeah, yeah. Who was like involved. And then there was like another, like, almost like a, like a Bond villain, like a Bond girl named Holly. Yeah, that they pair, that they paired up with Luke for a while, but then they brought Laura back. So then they, yeah, it was. I I used to watch Demi all Moore. Of, Demi Moore played uh, Jackie Templeton. Jackie Templeton on General Hospital. John Stamos was on General yep. Hospital. Blackie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Blackie. We're going down a rabbit hole. We gotta. Oh God, I feel dizzy now. Oh my God. <laughs> I I need to go and like find some old episodes of General Hospital. That show was bananas they all were so great yeah they all were but gen- like yeah and then there was oh i can't remember there were there were a lot but santa barbara got crazy too they all did they all did that's why they're amazing that's why they're amazing i yeah I, I was a fan such a fan this was really fun to rewatch and talk about do you want to hear some of the other movies of 1991 Yes, I do. Okay. We have covered quite a few 91 yeah. movies, so I'm starting to run out. <laughs> so the, this is a little deeper dive, maybe. We'll see. Um, the first one is Not Without My Daughter. Oh, that's Sally, Sally Field. Field. <laughs> it's kind of racist. Just a little. Yeah. So, just a little. Just a tad. Not Without My, not without my Racist Daughter. And then uh, La Femme Nikita. Really? Oh, the Bridget Bond one? No, that's uh, the original one. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen that. I've seen the one with Bridget. Oh, that's Point of No Return, yeah. right? Yeah. The original one's great. Point of No Return is great, too. I like I like both. it. Me, New, too. New Jack City. Oh, yeah. See ya, and I wouldn't want to be ya. That's a good movie. Yeah, that, that was a that good And that movie, movie had a soundtrack that, like, everybody... It, that had the, I want to sex you up. <laughs> 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 I was into it. Um, we also had Steven Seagal is out for justice. <laughs> <laughs> God. Ew. Jungle Fever. I've got jungle fever. Mm-hmm. She's got, got jungle, jungle fever. fever. That was a Stevie good wonder. Yeah, that yeah. was a good movie. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the no. Ooze. 
Okay. I took my little brother to see that. V.I. Warsawski. That's Kathleen Turner. Yeah. My mom loved that movie so much. I, she read all those novels. I haven't seen it since the theater. I would. Do you think it holds on? I'm certain it does it. My mom had crazy taste. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of crazy taste, Cool as Ice came out in 91. <gasps> oh, yes. We should do an episode about Cool as Ice. I would totally be in for it. Because it's, I have a feeling it's, it's bananas. It's fucking bananas. Um, this one, we probably did this, we talked about this one before, but The Adams Family. Yeah, I think we've decided the second one's the funnier one. Yeah. Yeah, but I Paul st- Rednick. Yeah, but I still, I like the, I like both, but mm-hmm. this, I think the second one might be a little funnier. But Raul Julia and Angelica Houston in these movies are like relationship goals. They're so good. Oh, they're so amazing. Raul Julia. That was a sad one. Yeah, he was young. Yeah. And then I'm sure you saw this one a million times. Um, Ernest Scared Stupid. <laughs> I've never seen an Ernest I movie. Haven't I haven't either. Kinda, and I, I'm not a snob. I just haven't. I have never seen an Ernest Scared Stupid movie. Um, is that one of the first movie? Are these the first movies ever based on like a character from commercials? I'm like, it's so weird. Yeah, he Ernest did was, too. Yeah, because he was like a he was a commercial character, right? Yeah. Hey, Vern. Yeah. Vern. Yeah. It's so weird. It's like if they made an animated movie with the like. Honey Nut Cheerios B or something. They, they, they try to do that with the cavemen. Remember that? They try <gasps> to make a caveman sitcom. That's right. Based on the caveman ads. That's so bizarre. Yeah. Anyway. That's, that's hear about, our movies. So do you want to hear about the top selling albums of 91? Yes, I do. Because we've done this many times. I was like, oh, I think I've picked these songs before. So these are the top albums. Mm-hmm. Best selling. U2, Octom Baby which I loved. I loved this album. It was one of my first CDs I bought. Loved it. Uh, Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion mm-hmm. 2. Yeah, everybody had this. Natalie Cole, Unforgettable. <laughs> I did not have this. I did. My parents had this. Yeah, of course they did. Uh, Garth Brooks, Rope in the Wind. Garth Brooks was so, so popular. popular. He's still Every, popular. He's still he popular. still is. And he seems like a really nice guy. Yeah, Metallica's Metallica, one of their best albums. That's the one that like really put them on the map, right? Yep. Yeah, with like yep. Enter Sandman and Yep. Oh my gosh. I love Enter Sandman. That song is badass. It's a badass song. Uh Vanilla Ice to the Extreme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> you be you boo. Mm-hmm. And the number one album of 1991 was Mariah Carey's Mariah Carey. I think that was her first album. I loved that album. I had a yeah. cassette. It had Visions of Lo- Vision of Love on it. Mm-hmm. Loved that song. Loved it. And then, what was it? Someday. I love so- Oh, my God. Now I'm going to listen. She had I'm so many hits in the 90s. Yeah. She was, like, the biggest fucking deal when that album yeah. came out. Because she was so beautiful. And she could really sing. It was like, holy shit, who's so this? Like, she could do four or five octaves. I forget it's which insane. one. insane. Yeah, she's very talented. I'm going to listen to Vision of Love after this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love Danny Pellegrino for his podcast. Um, uh, 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 what is it? Iconic with, um, God, everything iconic with Danny Pellegrino. He's a Real Housewives person. And when he interviews a celebrity, he always his one question for them always is, "What's your favorite Mariah Carey song?" <gasps> I love that. <laughs> yes. Is is the are the answers like all over the map? It's usually somebody usually says if they have no idea who she is, they'll just say the Christmas song, mm. which I love that Christmas I song love it too. too. Yeah, but I think for me, it's uh, the one that that samples. Uh, oh, Tom oh. Tom Club. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, fantasy. Fantasy. Thank you. That song is dope. It's so dope. I love that song. Good pick. I might pick I might pick that one too. Although I really like Always Be My Baby. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. But I like Vision of Love a lot. And she did a version of the Jackson Fives, I'll Be There. Oh that my was god. Really, really nice. Yeah. yeah, when she did Unplugged. That was a really good one too. Mm-hmm. I can't pick just one. No, who can? <laughs> a monster. 
<laughs> what else are you dorking out about? So this week, I really enjoy, I, I did a deep dive. It's a, there's a Brooklyn comedian. Her name is Sarah Cooper. Oh. And what she's been doing is she took off like in the middle of end of April, even like, I think it was April 23rd. She put out her first video. I don't, I'll go back to what she does is she takes Trump's speeches and then she lip syncs exactly <laughs> what he's saying and then kind of acts it out. It's amazing. And it's what we all need. Yeah. It's just because he, I mean, it's, we're in a very, it's a very tough weekend. We're recording this and it's, it's hard to make, make jokes about what's going on in the mm -hmm. world. But when you're ready for that, you go to her and it's, she just literally word for word, she just takes what he's saying and then acts out. But she was, she was on the Ellen show this week. We were talking about Ellen before and they treated her like she was a rock star. Like they were just Good. like, Oh my God. Yeah. They're like, you are, this is the best that it's, it's great political comedy mm -hmm. and it's not being snotty and it's, it's just, she's just doing it. That the best thing you can do is just use his words against him mm -hmm. and just, that's all she's doing. And, and she's, just, and it's the funniest fuck. I've watched them like 10 times over. She's on Instagram. <laughs> she's on everything now. So it's Sarah S A R H and then C P R. And if you're looking for a laugh, and she's also just very funny, and she mm -hmm. posts some stuff there. I don't think she's going to post anything this weekend because it's not, you know. But yeah. when he's just doing his thing, like, you should just inject yourself with disinfectant <laughs> or something. And she just has that whole thing where she takes the liquid thing. And anyway, you should just check her out. I've, I've been dorking out about that. It's so funny. She's so it's, She's they, great. They're so funny. They're amazing. Definitely everyone should go look. Uh, while we're recording this, like, I don't, the whole country's kind of on fire right now. Yeah. Like that's not, we're in the middle say, yeah. of a pandemic and the country is on fire. It's very overwhelming. So um, we're trying to keep it light. But, yeah. But as we said off mic, Margot and I have, we're people that have a lot of empathy for people and we're both feeling very overwhelmed. So yeah. Uh, watching Soap Dish was actually perfect. kind of a perfect little thing to do. Um, I watched this week the new Hannah Gadsby special on Netflix. Oh, I'm going to check that out this weekend. Yeah. How was it? It was very good. Uh, oh, it, my, good. Hus my husband watched it with me too uh, because this is the one where she finally, where she talks about how she was diagnosed with autism. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously very close to us for people who don't know. My son is autistic and he's eight. So I loved hearing her perspective about it you know and she she said something like it was like it's like everybody in the room is on one wavelength and you're on another and she also but she does this thing where she's she's showing like throughout the show she'll start showing these like old classic paintings and then talk about like the male gaze and the male perspective <laughs> of like these were choices that they made and it's like naked women with like a scarf like kind of writing up their butt and she's like this isn't an accidental picture this is a painting that they made and this is a choice they made and they sat here and they slaved over it for hours like and the way she focuses in on things is so funny but she also uses these paintings to kind of explain what it's like for her so it's like a picture of like a painting of like a wedding and there's like a woman with a black dress there and she's all that's me like I show up to the wedding and I'm in the black dress. Like she always <laughs> feels like she's on a different wavelength, like that she's, it's hard for her to read the room. And I, I really like that, how she explained it. I'm not doing it justice. She also talks a lot about her haters, which she got oh, a yeah. ton of. Her last special, um, Nanette, is amazing. Amazing. And it's, it's really uh, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, the idea that like kind of that first album syndrome where it's like mm -hmm. you have your whole life to make that first album and then you have like two years to make the second. Like by if the you're lucky. Yeah. So by the time Nanette came out, it was like a perfect polished show, like super tight, right on point came out at like the right time, like right, like when me too was happening and we're, and people are trying to like vocalize what it's like to be a woman in like a world that's kind of built for men and it's really really good 
this one I think maybe suffers a little bit by comparison, but I like that she she talks about like the hate she got from that first special. And it's like, that's not comedy. And I've never heard of you. And this is like a one woman show. And she's like, I don't care. I love your hate. I snack on it. (laughs) (laughs) And she goes on a big, yeah. And she goes on a big rant about anti-vaxxers, which obviously is going to hit me where I live. So I'm like, yes, yes, (laughs) go on, please. So it's, it's really, really good. I think. I don't. I, oh, don't I can't know. wait to check it out. Yeah, I don't know if it hits like Nanette did, um, but I still really liked it, and I would watch whatever she does next. I think she's a really good voice. We need no. We need more of that. Yeah. Well, Nanette was just its own thing. It mm-hmm. was just so different from what we were used to, and it's like, and, and Nanette even like that takes a while to get going. Yeah. Like you're kind of not sure who she is and where she's going with this thing. And she doesn't end it on a big joke. You know, she ends it seriously. So, but uh, it was one of those things, like I couldn't wait to talk about it with people as soon as I saw it. Yeah. And she, um, I was going to say something else and I totally blanked. (gasps) Oh, I hate when that happens. Anyway. Can you hear that? Nope. No, sorry. My sister tried to call me. Oh, nope. I didn't hear it. Nope. It's okay. All right. Okay. Anyway, I forgot what I was going to say about Hannah Gadsby. But, um, uh, I still, I think this one's really good. And like I said, I think she has really important things to say and I'm in, I'm here for it. So I'm in, I like it. I recommend. I'll definitely check it out. I'm going to check it out. Do it. Well, <sighs> do. Where can people find you on the internet, Margot? You can find me on social media at Brooklyn Fitchick, and that's mostly for Twitter and Instagram. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And if you like the sound of our voices, we also Mm -hmm. co-host What a Creep. And we're having such a good time talking about creeps. It's so much fun. It's it's such a great release. That's what a lot of people are telling us. It's a really good release for all that anger you have in you. Just let it out. Yes, we have a, a very active Facebook group. Please Mm -hmm. join. Just go over, you know, type it into face. I know Facebook is shitty and awful, but we're trying to create a nice little space there. So go type in what a creep. Ask to join the group. We'll probably let you in if you're not a juggalo or your name isn't like (laughs) small penis spelled weird or whatever. Which Uh, is really what happened. That totally happened. That's a true story. And uh, we have a Patreon page and it's awesome. Please join. Um, yes. You can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram and sometimes on Facebook. But I'm mostly when I'm on Facebook, I'm usually active in the fa- in the What a Creep group. So, yeah, please, if you're looking for me, that's where you could find me. Um, and you could find Dorking Out at DorkingOut.com and Dorking Out Show on Twitter and sometimes Facebook and wherever you find your podcasts. If you're listening on Apple, please give us a review. It's really awesome. We appreciate it. We know Apple doesn't make it easy, but we're not part of some network. It helps us find our people. Exactly. And you want us to find our people, right? Of course you do, because you're rad. (laughs) You listened all the way to the end. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for, but, but once again, you guys, listeners, thank you for recommending Soap Dish. It really, yes. it was really good to watch it. It was like really good timing. I'm so glad we watched it. It was a good pick and we take requests. So, you know, tweet at us, send us messages, send us an email at dorkingoutshow at gmail.com. If you want stickers or you have other requests, do it. We love requests. Yes, th- we do. And thanks for talking about Soap Dish with me, Margo. This was super fun. It, I'm, I'm re- telling you guys, if you need like just a, a break away from everything that's happening in the world, this will do it. This will help you so much. She's your daughter. 